Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, and let's start. First off, some introduction. Uh, you know my name. I'm a bit of a nomad. And uh, what you see in the bottom is gibberish. If you don't understand it, it's fine, because you don't know Finnish then. But that's my song, which means uh, it says I, this, it's not my home, which is a good song for a nomad like me. Um, I work for Red Hat. Um, and uh, work on FOSS. I've been working on free software and open source for a long time now. Um, and I do flying, and I love cats. <laughs> um, so uh, I had a similar talk at RustFest. So if some of you were there, then it's a recap. But otherwise, it's a background story uh, real quick. Um, so the whole thing started with this project called GeoClue. It's, uh, uh, it's a daemon, it's a service on, on your uh, Linux laptops, uh, which uh, finds where you are through different sources and stuff. Um, and, um, the, and I've been, um, it's a geolocation service. It's, as I said, it finds you where you are. And it's uh, written in, in C currently. <laughs> and um, I've been a maintainer since the rewrite. Um, it was in 2013, I think. Um, and, um, I uh, thought, like, let's oxidize it, but you'll ask why. Um, and I have reasons. <laughs> and it's uh, called crash reports. I got a lot of crash reports, and Will was telling me that uh, on their end, in Endless, uh, they saw a huge amount of crashes in GeoClue. <laughs> so uh, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm working on that <laughs> so permanently. And I, it's, it's my spare time thing, so I don't want to, you know, uh, chase after crash reports and C code. So, um, Also, like uh, location is the most sensitive data that is about you. So you don't want to be trusted by everyone and anything. And especially if it's written in an unsecure, very, very unsecure language, it's not, it's not a good idea. Um, and I just love Rust um, for various reasons. I have a blog post about it if you want to read. <laughs> um, so I, I thought, like, let's let's do it, let's oxidize it. But what are the challenge? What were the challenges that I was looking forward to? Uh, first one was Mason. It's a build system that is being used by a lot of projects out there now, um, and um, uh, I thought because Mason doesn't have like built-in support for cargo, so I thought like it will be a bit of a challenge. Um, and um, uh, the other thing was Dbus. Like uh, as I said, it's a, it's a uh, service on your laptop, so it's it's uh, it's a Dbus service. Um, I'll talk about Dbus a bit. Um, it's, um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very efficient binary interprocess communication protocol. Um, and it's uh, used in desktop and embedded systems quite a lot. Um, and um, it's, um, there is one crate already existing. It's called Dbus RS. Um, and uh, I, was, I wasn't very happy with the API and stuff, but I wanted to. Um, um, use it, even though it uh, depends on a C library called libdbus. Uh, that library is not very famous for its interfaces and stuff. Um, and I think there's some bunch of other problems with it. I don't think anyone, not many people use it anymore, even. Um, and so yeah, we had had this many, many issues. Um, but I still decided to use um, uh, the, the crate because that was the only one, and I didn't have a lot of time. It's, it's, as I said, it, well, it's all my spare time stuff. Um, I even contributed to it in the beginning, uh, a few patches there and stuff. And um, um, and then the, we had a hackfest. Uh, we do this Rust uh, GNOME hackfest, which is about GNOME and Rust, and um, every uh, about every six months, twice a year. Uh, and this, the last, uh, the one um, in uh, last year, one of them uh, was in May in uh, Berlin, and I started working on this uh, to oxidize GeoClue. Um, uh, but turns out, like the Mason stuff was, turns out to be very much easier to work around. Like the workaround was pretty simple, and um, it was not a big issue. Um, but um, uh, so I could call from Mason. Uh, I could call C Cargo, and Cargo does its own thing, and that's that's it. Um, so I didn't need something back from the results of Cargo uh, to into Mason. So it, made, it simplified a lot of things. Um, but the Dbus RS uh, API turned out to be quite overcomplicated, and I couldn't figure it out. I asked others around, and they couldn't figure it out either. So um, I was like, how about I write first Dbus from scratch? Um, 
And um, yeah, I thought, uh, how hard can it be, right? <laughs> Let's check it out. Uh, so uh, I look, started looking into what's involved. And um, on a high level, it's, um, you have objects. And uh, each object has a, has a path. It's called object path. And um, it's just a string that represents that object on the bus. Um, in Dbus, you have buses. Like it's, it's a, think of it as sockets. And they're, they're talking to uh, um, apps talking to each other on those sockets, and um, uh, the um, they, uh, the services expose uh, uh, objects, and uh, on object on those objects they, you have uh, certain interfaces. Uh, each object can uh, support multiple interfaces or one interface, so, but it has to support one at least, um, and uh, those interfaces and then methods on them. So it's a bit dynamic. Like the reason it's like uh, the, uh, we have interfaces and not methods uh, an API directly on the object is that it could be more dynamic that you can on the fly change like okay this object now supports this interface and and, and not so um, yeah you have methods on them uh, simple input output parameters and um, signal is just the same it's just the other way around so you have um, parameters from them and you get signals called on you like uh, as a client um, you get signals and you send method calls and also, you have properties um, uh, that represent different properties on your interfaces. Um, but on the low level, it's just message passing on the uh, on sockets, as I said. Um, and there is a wire format for for these um, um, so for interfacing with the Dbus. Um, and it's also you can call it G variant, but not quite because. Uh, G variant is a glib API to, to handle um, uh, this wire format. But uh, the, uh, the people who were working on that, they made some changes. And the, the intention was to put those changes back into Dbus pack, so Dbus itself will change. But that didn't happen for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, G variant is slightly different than uh, the wire format of Dbus, but it's based heavily on that, so there's a lot of similarity. So at least you can have the same API. So for example, glib has Dbus APIs, and they use G variant. So you um, you, do, you you deal with uh, G variant, and they convert uh, behind the scene. Um, so um, and this this format G variant uh, is used uh, standalone as well. Um, projects like OS3 uh, and uh, Flatpak and Deconf, they are, they are using it. There are some examples, but I think there's a lot more the, out there. Um, and so what, what is this uh, wire format? Um, it's just uh, they defined a bunch of data types and their encodings. Um, on a, um, so in, and since it's a binary format, there's the al alignment consideration in the memory, so, but it follows natural alignment. So if you have uh, unsigned integer of uh, uh, four bytes, so the alignment for that is four bytes. If it's eight bytes, then it's eight bytes and stuff like that. Um, we'll see that later. And each data type has a signature. Signature is just a string that represents that type. Um, so the basic types, um, they um, have uh, one character uh, string, like for example, S for string for strings and stuff like that. Um, but for complicated one, you have like uh, longer <laughs> signatures. But there's um, a limited to um, 255 characters because uh, we will see later why. <laughs> and basic types are like mapping very nicely to the Rust basic types, so it's that's not hard. And containers kind of also like you have arrays, which is like vector or, or an array and Rust uh, structure. Um, and a dictionary is just like a hash map. Um, and we have another type called variant, uh, which is very, which is a, um, it's, it looks very simple, but it's, it makes things a bit hard. Uh, because uh, Dbus, uh, the, the format, the wire format is not, um, self, uh, self-defined. So it's you have to have this, the signature. You not, need to know the signature or what data is in there, what kind of data to to be able to decode it. Um, so it's not self-describing. Um, but this data, this type is because for the signature for this type um, is uh, is dynamic. So you get it in the encoded data. What is actually in the in the variant? So you can put it any of those types that I mentioned in the variant. 
and you put a signature in uh, before it and you send it to the other side. So it's for dynamically typing things, um, used, used quite a lot actually in, on Divas. Um, example, so that you understand what the hell <laughs> am I talking about. Um, so let's say there's, you have a string you want to transfer on in this format. So um, uh, the, the format, like let, we'll go from uh, right to left. Oh, and uh, at the bottom you have the uh, byte addresses uh, in the message. Um, and um, uh, I've highlighted the um, four byte boundary, so you, you can s tell more easily what's what. Um, so yeah, you, uh, the uh, string, you, it's supposed to be null terminated, and uh, just before the string, uh, you, won't, you, uh, you put the byte length. It's not the, le um, yeah, sorry. It's the length of the uh, string, but without the null byte. That uh, was, uh, I learned it the hard way. I forgot about that, and test case were passing, and then I found out. Um, so yeah, you have the length, and then since the length is a, is the fixed part of this um, string encoding, and that's four bytes. Um, you have the uh, alignment of four bytes, so that's why we needed uh, two uh, two bytes before it, null bytes or padding, to align it on a eight byte bound, uh, sorry, four byte boundary. And invariant, it's the same. Um, there's a reason I'm giving you these details. <laughs> You'll see later. Um, uh, you, when you put a string in a variant, it's the same as if you look at from right to left. Uh, you have the null byte, you have the string, um, and you have the byte length of it. And again, you need to pad it. Um, and since you are putting it in a variant, what you do is the first part is the signature of the data because um, you only know at runtime, if you see decoded data, you only know at runtime what, what is encoded in the variant. So you need a signature first in it. And signature is encoded in the same way as a string. Uh, the only difference is that the length is one byte um, size. So uh, that is a good thing because then you need, don't need any alignment because it's one byte. Um, and uh, you, um, yeah, you, but you're limited to 255 characters of signature, but th that's more than enough. You don't want a complex type so complex that it's more than 255 characters long. Um, anyway, so that's, that's how you encode a, a string in a, in a variant. So I was like looking at that, I was like, that's not so hard, let's do it. Um, so I, I was working on in the Hackfest and after for three days, uh, and um, well, I was not distracted by this work thing, so it, it went very fast. And, uh, I, I managed to do, made some uh, good progress in just a few days, like established a connection, called a method on the other side, and uh, I was like, yeah, I, I can do it, let's, let's do it, <laughs> cool. Um, so I, I decided to create a new library called Zbus, uh, and why name Zbus? Because it sounds really awesome, so I chose this name. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but um, I thought, like, let's start with the hard part, the lower level. So if I'm d writing a Dbus library, I should um, write it completely in Rust, like from scratch. And um, I call that part Z variant because it deals with the variants. It's called uh, because G variant and all, you know. Um, so I had these goals in mind, like how I would do things, and I wanted to be it to be very efficient. Um, if possible, even more efficient than the C implementation in, in glib, um, which I think I'll achieve if I haven't already. Um, but the silly goal was um, I wanted to be efficient from, from day one, and I, I don't think that's a good idea. So if you ever start a project, don't, don't do it this way. Um, and um, I came up with this first trait. I was like, yeah, this is the trait that will... Uh, all the uh, data type that can be encoded and decoded from, from this format, they will implement this uh, interface. Um, and as you can see, there's lifetimes in there, and that's because I wanted to be super efficient. <laughs> um, so lots of issues, of course, at any project, from if you start from scratch especially. Um, loads of fun with lifetimes. Um, and um, the variant representation proved to be a bit challenging. Like the most natural I was thinking first was like, um, I can have generic type on the variant uh, so value, like have a struct signature and then value and that's it and that would be generic. But then when you are decoding, you need to know, you know, how do you decode? Like you, you need to know the type in advance, like the whole type. So uh, it didn't exactly work. So um, I, I went with enums. It's 
much better, I think, with that one. Um, and uh, but eventually, I dealt with all these problems, and uh, and I had test cases for each data type I added support for, um, and it started to look really good. Um, and I was like about to, you know, I said, like just document it and just, you know, release the first version of Zvariant. It would be cool. Uh, but I, as soon as I added test, uh, the support for hash maps, like the dictionary type, uh, test cases are not passing. I thought it's a test case, but it wasn't. I'll give you a chance. If you can tell me what is wrong with this, um, this is where it goes wrong. Like when I added, um, uh, like when I put it in a variant, the dictionary, um, so I hit a problem. Um, so I was looking at this, and it looked right. Uh, this is uh, just the same as I, we did a string in a variant. Now it's an array of 64-bit uh, um, integer in, a, um, in an array in a variant. Um, so how you do it is the same, very similar to the string. You have the array itself, um, and you have uh, the elements, like the first element need to be at least padded. Um, and um, you have the length of the array in bytes. By the way, this is in bytes, not in not the number of elements in the array. And um, then the padding for the length itself, and then the signature, like we had with um, uh, with the string. But this time, you have like A is for array, and T is for uh, the 64-bit integers. Um, so you can tell what it is inside the variant. Uh, but there is one thing that is wrong in here. Can anyone tell me what is wrong here? Huh? No, no. What about alignment? Like you're not calculating the alignment correctly for the variable size array? No. OK, I'll move forward. <laughs> so I couldn't figure this out for many days, right? So, and I was like back to Deba's spec reading um, and staring and stuff and uh, figuring out what the hell is going on. Um, Till I realized that I think I'm wrong about the padding. Um, as I said, like the variant does not require any padding itself because it starts with a signature and signature's length is one byte, so that doesn't require any padding. But, uh, but the more I read the spec, I was getting more and more sure that uh, the, um, the uh, um, array itself or the, uh, anything in the variant itself, the value of the variant, does not require padding either. Um, and that's what, what is wrong. So I was like, OK, how do I fix this? Um, I was like, this, is, this needs a complete overhaul of the whole, how the, uh, all the variant encoding and decoding is working. So I'm like, OK, whatever, <laughs> I have to do this. But I first was like, OK, let's, this lifetimes, like each time I made any change, significant change in the whole thing, um, lifetime would come on the way. So I was like, this is uh, not good. And that's why I should have, shouldn't have started with super efficient implementation from day one. Um, so I was like, let's kill all the lifetimes first. So I, I had, the way I did it was I created this uh, data type. I looked around her at first, like if there is exactly like something like this. There is cursor, but cursor is not exactly like this. So you, uh, this allows you to create like a shared. Um, uh, you can have a slice of a of a data, and you can you know have as many slices as possible and pass it around the clones of that because it uses a uh, RC, um, and it knows its position in the whole buffer because the alignment is based on the your position in the entire buffer, the entire messages. If it's a dbus message, then the entire dbus message. Uh, so you need to know where you, exactly you are, you are at that point. Um, and efficiency is not a religion, so we can do it later. It would be nice, of course, but. So after two months of, of this lifetime killing and creating this new uh, interface and everything, I was done. And I was like, OK, let's see the test case. And I was sitting, and I was about to hit enter after you know cargo test and I was like, would it pass? Would it pass? No, it didn't pass. <laughs> um, so I went back to the more spec reading and <laughs> byte staring. Um, turns out it wasn't the padding after all. You know, you do need to pad everything, um, and um, it was the length. Uh, the length uh, does not uh, include the first element's padding. The spec showed it very clearly. For some reason, I missed that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, um, that's that's the only small thing I had missed previously. 
and I did the whole changes and everything, and <laughs> it was this trivial thing, and it, I fixed it soon. So it should be 16 because, yeah, the, the, um, yes, so there's 8 bytes and then 8 bytes, so that's 16. Um, yeah, trivial to fix, well, Christmas holiday well spent. <laughs> um, I published the variant, it's out there, you can find it, it's, if you, I've added docs too. <laughs> um, it's, uh, you can use it in, you know, in a very easy way. You can, uh, you just, you have a, in this example, for example, you have a string you want to encode, you tell it which format. Currently we only do dbus format, so it doesn't matter. Um, and um, yeah, um, and then you can decode it back. Um, simple. Um, a bit slightly more complicated uh, integer in a variant, for example. Um, same thing, but you convert it to a, a variant and then encode the variant itself and then back to variant. And then you can get the value from the variant. So don't use it yet, but <laughs> because I do want efficiency. So I'm back into that, and I think I'll need API breakage for sure. Um, not just because of that, but also um, imagine what uh, first issue anyone filed on, on this crate support for Serde. Like, why don't you have Serde API? So um, I was looking into that, and I was like, yeah, it makes sense, and if I can make it work, and I'm working on that. Uh, I have an experimental branch for it. Um, the main challenge with Serde is that it's way too generic. Um, uh, so I, I'll show you. So the, I have a uh, proof of concept serialization, serializer implementation already, and it works as far as I know. <laughs> um, but um, if you're familiar with Serde, um, usually you get like um, an API like this, where you say two bytes and, or whatever, two um, to write or what, uh, whatever is the output of the um, output type of the API, and um, but the only difference is that I'm requiring another trait uh, from the the type you want to encode or later decode as well, um, and the reason is that I need the signature at the moment at least. Um, so I'm trying my best to, I mean, because otherwise, what's the point of Serde? Because with Serde. Uh, you should be able, anything that implements the Serde serialize or deserialize, that type should be serializable by all the crates that implement Serde. And that's the whole point of it, it's generic. Um, so I, I don't see much point of writing Serde if I can't uh, remove this limitation. So I'm, I'm working on it. Um, uh, even if I provide a macro, right? Like, I, like Serde provides um, easy derived macros, so you can put it on your custom type and that has serialized and deserialized then. So you can add one more, but just for my crate, you would add that, that's weird. So um, yeah, I'm really trying hard to avoid that. Yeah, drop it. And once I have that done, I'll look into deserializer. I looked a bit, but I haven't done any implementation. Um, and I think the byte order should be configurable right now. I just assume native byte order. Uh, it works fine with dbus because you know it's on the same uh, machine. Um, and G variant support shouldn't be that hard, <laughs> but fingers crossed. <laughs> and a few goodies like that, right? Um, in J variant, Z variant, I mean. And also large area handling. Uh, I've I've been told like a lot, uh, some of the projects, at least OS3, for example, um, store like a large array in a file. It's which is um, variant. It's in a G variant format, but it's a large array, and it's not ideal to have to load it all to decode it. It's, it's not ideal at all. So I would like to have some kind of streaming API that you can read easily. Like you say, I want to read from index this to this, and that's the you know, elements you get from the array um, directly from file. Um, so yeah, back to Dbus, <laughs> what I want to have. Um, so I already have some implementation. I haven't released Zbus yet at all, because Z variant is not finalized yet. Um, but this is how it currently looks like, and it would look something like similar on the lower level at least. Um, so you have, um, you establish a connection, you tell it which, um, which service, then uh, which um, object you want to talk to, and you tell it the interface, and then the method and stuff. 
and that's how you call a method. Um, and then you get a reply, and then you, it's, variant, it's based on Z variant, like variant API that I just showed. So yeah, uh, this is the uh, standard interface that uh, Dbus, any Dbus broker on your machine will implement, so you can use it. Um, more, uh, in terms of Dbus, after I have all that, I, I need to do a few things, like receiving messages, maybe. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, and um, signals. This is not just methods. Um, async. I want. Uh, I'll hopefully it will be async, just async std based because it's it's the coolest <laughs> API I, I see for uh, async and Rust. Um, and um, a high level API then, like once I have the low level, so um, so that you can work with objects. For I will mod, I want to model it after glibs API where you um, if you are a client you create a proxy object for a specific uh, object on a specific interface, and then you can call different methods or get read properties from it, and it even caches the properties local, like on, on your side. Um, and um, in terms of a server, you have something similar. You have a server object, and you add an interface to it, um, and yeah, and then you implement those methods like anything, like any trait. So it will be trait-based on the server side. Um, code generation, a lot of projects out there, they use, like if, especially client side, they use code generation um, because nobody has time to, you know, write individual uh, interfaces um, and like, uh, yeah, so it's, it's harder if you don't use code generation. And uh, in glib, uh, there's the gdbus code gen, uh, which is really cool. Um, and I, I think Qt has something similar. I never managed to use it, but it's, it's there. <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe also macros, that would be cool. Some people ask for it um, so that it's, uh, I worked previously on a language called Vala and it has like syntax, special syntax for uh, doing um, uh, Dbus uh, server and client side implementation, which makes it really convenient. Um, so macros would allow for something similar. And a lot of other easy stuff. <laughs> That's it, sorry. <laughs> I'm done early. So we have time for questions. Is it Zed and Zedbus for Zsharp? I'm not answering that. <laughs> the question was if uh, Zbus stands for Zshan. First of all, it's Zbus, not Zbus. <laughs> That, that, that gives you a hint, right? <laughs> I did not fully understand what the great difference is with the current uh, so the two, implementations. So the question is, what's the big difference between this and the current uh, Dbus RS crate, right? Um, the first one is that it doesn't depend on uh, the, the C library, the lib Dbus, um, which is not just that it's in C, but it's also the API is not that nice, and it shows in in the, the Rust API, that the, the, wrap, the wrapper API. So it would be good to break away from, from that for multiple reasons. And yeah, so the whole reason I started with the whole effort was I want something very safe. So, and if you depend on a C library for your main thing, it won't be very <coughs> safe, so. Time yes, yeah. Stuff, yeah. So gram up memory, and then you just decode out of that, and the byte, like these large blob, they are basically just like pointers. Yeah. So I think that in our case, like it makes sense to have like slice references to this memory mapped area if you can. Yeah. So when you are DCI, that's that's a common. Mm. Then I had a question, which is, um, do you know like how different the variant stuff is between? Can the can I first repeat for the recording yes. or streaming? Please. <laughs> what was that? Uh, yeah, for the, the for the array, mapping. no, they, there was this. Um, Lucas said that there's a, um, a usually in, for example, in OS tree where you have the large arrays, um, they just use memory mapping for they map the whole file and then they can read whatever part they want to read, yeah. and that's the way. Yeah. And the question instead was like, do you know how, how much difference there is between the variants in Dbus and the variants in G variants? 
The, the, the variant part is the same as far as I know. It's the arrays and it's the other uh, data types that are encoded a bit differently. Okay. Uh, is it like majorly different or is it? There is some, there's, it's not majorly different. I, I'm pretty confident that uh, the API I have, it will not need to change. Um, so it should be, should be good. Mm-hmm. So, Roughly. yeah, the question is if I can provide a rough estimate uh, on when Zbus will be ready for consumption. Basic functionality. Yeah, basic functionality depends on what basic means. <laughs> but um, I would say uh, ideally, I think I should be done by summer. But it, uh, you need to keep in mind it's my spare time thing, so uh, it depends on a lot, a lot, a lot of things and. Um, I have a life too, so it's a. Uh, so, uh, is all the code sort of in, in that repository? Is that everything goes in there straight away? Or, or is it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, even my experimental branch is, is in there. Okay. So, um, but on the debug side, like when I change the Z variant API, it wouldn't be such a big change. So, if you want to accelerate things, please do contribute if you can. And um, we can collaborate. Uh, there was already one person after Rustfest, they contributed some patch, um, and it was nice, and yeah, so it's already possible. And I will handle, when, once the Z-Variant API changes and I, you have to port it, I'll do the porting, so don't worry about okay, it. Because so you don't expect the Z-Bus API to change so much? Yeah, I, I won't only expect it to grow. Like, okay. it's the existing API won't change much, as I don't think so. project and had some problems finding errors. I would like to ask you if you have some tips on debugging Rust programs, because what I'm currently doing is including a ton of print lines and then removing them again when the release is running out, and that's sort of primitive. I, I did that too, <laughs> to be honest. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, one of the things is like if you go to the channels, the, the Discord channel and IRC channel, there's a lot of really helpful people there. So I paste codes in somewhere in the, the playground, Rust playground, and I ask, and they, usually there is an answer. So that, for me, that helps a lot. And the only thing is that you need to create like a small test case for your, for your issue um, that is, doesn't involve all the details that, you, you, that are specific to your project. So if you can create a sample code, it really, really helps a lot to get help on, on your issue specific. You mean the derived debug? No, uh, the DPG debug macro. Ah, okay. So it, it returns the contained value. Okay. So now you repeat it. <laughs> Sorry. You, uh, do you want me to repeat that first? Uh, so the question, the, well, it was more like a suggestion of how to, how to make it how debugging uh, easier. And there's this DBG uh, macro that helps with, you know. It, it returns the content. If yeah. You Yeah. Uh, so I did have a question as well. Uh-huh. Um, you started out saying that you wanted to make things go really fast by <coughs> using light times to make sure that data structures are in one place and prevent copying. And then you found it very difficult to maintain, so you ripped it all out. Um, there seems to be a common progression that I've seen amongst developers. Are there any other experiences that you had that you, you began trying to use all the rough before said you were going to use generics all the time and then you thought, oh, that wasn't a good idea. Do you have any other suggestions that you could think of 
No, that, that first I would like to clarify like your question. Do I have to repeat, repeat right? Just if you have any more tips. Yeah, the question is if I have uh, tips about, like, as I said, like, I removed um, uh, the um, lifetimes, and then it was easier to, to uh, change things. Um, if I have any suggestion of any other similar examples, right? That's what the question is. Uh, the, first of all, I would clarify that I removed lifetime temporarily. Um, I want to you know, first change, the, because I was doing a lot of changes, so um, that was on the way. So once I have done that, then I can uh, put it back. So it's not like I've removed it permanently. So, but apart from that, I don't think there's any other things that I had to remove to, to make things easier. Um, uh, but certainly I would comment that uh, a lot of times uh, Rust developers tell you like, yeah, don't, my, don't mess with lifetimes and uh, you don't need to know about lifetimes. I don't think that's true. You need to know about lifetimes if you want to do really good Rust you know, code, you know, if you want to code it better. Uh, the question is, uh, since uh, the, uh, I will only uh, um, oxidize the server side of, of GeoClue and not the client side, which is a library, um, which is GTK, sorry, glib based, and uh, it's very good for glib applications out there. And also it's good for other languages too because of the geo, geo object inspection and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, if there would be any problems having these two different worlds in the same repository. Um, no, I don't think uh, there will be any problems. And uh, the good thing is that the GeoClue service is quite standalone. The code is pretty standalone. So uh, no, I don't expect any problems. Ah, I get it now. Uh -huh. yeah. So the question is, if um, if the recommended method uh, for the apps that, that are written in Rust, uh, would it be to use the, this uh, migrate the, the Rust crate uh, for to talk Dbus, or to still use G, uh, the glib based C API I provide? <laughs> um, uh, no, I think uh, it's up to them. But if I get to the code generation and macros, then it would be super easy to you know, um, create uh, the interface needed to talk to GeoClue. So then they can just use, use the, that. And I think that's what they should use, ideally. Yes? So I had, I had a experience working with the, the, the D-Bus uh, version of, of the Rust and D-Bus. And I found one of the things that I struggled a lot with was to actually decode the sequence of the messages that I got back from the other end. So I don't know if it's possible to, I suppose, vary Um, I'm not sure if I understood the question. Like, um, you want um, uh, the Z variant to, to be able to tell you about the data that is contained. Uh, if it is, um, it's, if it's a variant type, then yeah, of course you will. You have the signature <coughs> encoded in the data. But if it's not a variant type, then you don't have the signature at all. So you, uh, yeah, you can't you can't do that. Um, but if you know the interface, you know which signature it would be, then yeah, uh, you can. Uh, no? Any more? I don't think so. Oh, three, oh, thank you very much. No, yeah. three, two, one. No <laughs> <laughs> thank you.